Hey, Fleck, you got a joke for us today? We use music to make us whole, to balance the fractures within ourselves. I'm nobody. I haven't done anything with my life like you have. talking about Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. DC just dropped a brand new Joker 2 trailer, so we'll break it all down. There's a bunch of Easter eggs here. Obviously, Harley Quinn being introduced in the movie, probably one of the biggest things. Seems like a lot of the movie takes place inside their shared hallucinations, too. There'll probably be a couple other DC characters that we didn't see in the first movie popping up in this one, too, in the background. So if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. Also explain how this sort of fits into the larger canon and what their long-term plans are for this, because it does seem like it's going to be the last Joker movie. Right after the last movie came out, Todd Phillips and Joaquin Phoenix seemed kind of non-committal about doing a sequel. Todd Phillips definitely didn't want to do one right away, but I think it earning almost a billion dollars changed their minds. Like, that was the one thing that turned them around. Like, okay, yeah, fine, we'll do a sequel. And even though it seems like most of the events of the movie take place at Arkham Asylum and at their trial later in the movie, probably the biggest thing people are going to be talking about after this, probably the biggest thing you're wondering about is it actually going to be a jukebox musical like people thought it was going to be a while ago. People heard the word musical a while ago, so there was a lot of confusion about what that would actually look like. And it seems like their spin on it is basically what you see in the trailer. So yeah, it is kind of a musical, probably not in the traditional sense, but a lot, a lot of singing and a lot of songs. They said the budget was almost $200 million. I'm sure a lot of that came from the production design as well as the music licensing. The actual song they play across the trailer is What the World Needs Now. And obviously the trailer is all about Arthur Fleck, Joker in this world, talking about how he finally met someone he's not alone anymore, about Harleen Quinzel. And even though the way she looks, it's not totally clear, like they pass each other in the hallway, you see her make that sign like she's going to shoot herself in the head, she's got these disheveled looking clothing, I think she's meant to be one of the people that works at Arkham Asylum. There's a little confusion there because of their original backstory on Batman the Animated Series where she was created and then in the comics, which basically just carried that forward. If you remember the original Suicide Squad movie, that Harley Quinn backstory is the actual comic book backstory of the character. She started out working at Arkham Asylum and trying to treat Joker, then eventually fell in love with him. He twisted her evil and she became the Harley Quinn that most people know from the comics. You kind of see a version of that happening throughout this trailer, but when you see her for the first time, she already seems pretty out there, just reality-wise. So I think they're using the movie to tell her origin story and how it's possible for someone to actually fall in with Joker the way that Harley Quinn did. Like she was a little crazy before she met him. But they start out with him in his cell at Arkham Asylum with the guards trying to wake him, letting him out for the morning. Notice he says showtime, they sort of cue up the language, the musical of it all, like the performance is getting ready to start. They ask him for a joke because Joker... As they take him down the hallway for more treatment, he passes by Harley Quinn who's singing with the choir. She seems captivated by him, and I'm actually starting to think now, just based on some of this footage, that she's also an inmate at Arkham too, which even though it's a change, like it's a twist from her original origin story, does make a little more sense in the context here of why she could be so twisted already that she would fall in love with Joker. Like another inmate falling in love with him makes a little more sense. 
Another person talks about music being able to help heal people, make them whole, and that's what they're trying to do. Like, there's this hole inside Arthur that he's trying to fill, who it seems like is filled by Harley Quinn. They take him outside into the yard for what seems like his regular period that he's allowed to have outside. Notice the way they use color in this trailer, too, to juxtapose things. It seems like the color design and a lot of the tropes that they're using in this, a lot of the different setups, the scenes, are riffs on the classic musicals from 1960s. Notice we see Harley Quinn outside climbing up the same steps like Joker's steps that he was going down in the first movie. She passes him in the hallway at Arkham, makes the sign that she's shooting herself, and they have sort of like their meet cute kind of moment. It's really funny in a twisted kind of way. Based on what she says to him, it sounds like she admires what he did on television, and part of the idea is that everyone around Gotham City is meant to have seen it on television. So he is something of a celebrity. We see the spotlight, the crescendo, Joker on stage in full Joker makeup, looking like he's about to start singing, like the performance is about to start beginning. It's not totally clear if this is part of his hallucination, though, or if it's actually something that he does during the movie. Because there are a lot of moments here during a montage where they're dancing around from different place to place that definitely makes it seem like they're hallucinating things. Here it seems like there's some kind of performance at Arkham that they're both watching together. When she says, let's get out of here, obviously it's a bit of a loaded double meaning. Get out of here as in get out of this room, but also get out of Arkham, break out of Arkham. Then I think they're meant to be hallucinating this dance with the two of them dancing on stage in this part of the performance across the backdrop of the city, as if they're dancing around Gotham City metaphor. Also notice at this point, he has all of his Joker makeup on, but she doesn't have any Harley Quinn makeup on, so this seems like it's a little bit earlier in the film. We get the montage and the song of them waltzing across Gotham City with the backdrop of all of these riots having all this crazy stuff. Like I said, I think that they're meant to be hallucinating this, but if you look at his outfit here, he's in a regular non-Joker outfit. So what might have happened is that there's a riot and they use that to escape and they're dancing across Gotham City hallucinating, but they've actually already escaped. Then we see Joker being chased down the street by two other Jokers. A lot of people wondering what's going on here. Are these two fanboys who are dressed up like Jokers chasing him? Or is it him hallucinating two other versions of himself chasing him? They might actually be playing with that different perspective during the chase scene where he can't tell whether it's real or not. This scene with them in the background do make it look like they're two totally different people. So I think this is meant to really be happening with him being chased by Joker fanboys. This scene of the television show with Joker and Harley might actually really be happening, not a hallucination, because it does seem like they have a big trial in the city and they themselves both become even bigger celebrities because of that. So this might be another talk show like Murray's talk show where they come on to talk about themselves. Not totally sure if this scene is happening in his head, if it's a hallucination or if it's really happening because he's dressed up in the tuxedo but also has the Joker makeup on with this giant backdrop, this band behind them. This seems like it's happening much earlier in the movie with them just dragging him back to his cell through Arkham. Notice he's doing his classic laugh. This seems like it's happening towards the end of the movie because she's in full Harley Quinn makeup. Notice you have a bunch of fanboys and fangirls of them in the background holding up signs protesting the police in the court system. We get a scene of her helping him put his Joker makeup on. Then it seems like he's talking to one of the psychologists inside Arkham who's just trying to treat him and he explains how he's fallen in love with Harley Quinn like, oh, I found someone like me. Notice as the police are carting him to and from his trial, you see a bunch of people in Joker masks too. This seems like a hallucination of the two of them or one of them hallucinating them getting married, her kissing him through the bars at Arkham, them inside one of their hallucinations kissing. Not sure who he's beating up here in the background. This seems like it's happening in real life, though, but he's in his full Joker makeup and his outfit beating the crap out of someone. This looks like another part of their hallucination, dancing at the quote-unquote Hotel Arkham, like while they're inside Arkham Asylum. Notice the sign says vacancy, meaning that there's room for a bunch more people. This also might imply them getting ready to actually escape, like there will be more vacancy because there'll be two less people living there. This seems like a riot happening in the street with Harley Quinn smashing the windows of an electronics store with a bunch of TVs showing Arthur talking about something. Maybe it's him on a talk show. This seems like the key to their breakout from Arkham, how they actually escape. It seems like they just start a fire and it just turns into a full-blown riot. Putting her Harley Quinn makeup on for the first time. This is from that scene earlier in the movie where it was raining and they were taking him outside for his outside time. It just seems like he breaks into full-on Joker laughter. And remember, the whole thing is that he isn't laughing because he's happy. He's laughing because he's upset. That's part of the way his disorder works. He laughs more often when he's upset. It seems like there's some kind of explosion inside their trial as well. Harley Quinn pulling the gun on him. This might be before they actually totally get together. This might be a hallucination that Harley Quinn is having where she's putting her makeup on, but it's at his trial. Like she's sitting next to the lawyers, but it seems like the spotlight's on her as if she's having a hallucination. 
This is just from that other scene of them singing and dancing together with the band. Then we see her visiting him, saying that she wants to see the real him, as in the actual Joker persona, drawing the smile with makeup so that as his mouth makes the smile, his face actually moves up and it looks like he's wearing the makeup. Basically trying to tell him that she thinks that the Joker is his real self, like be more like the Joker, let's do this. And as they say during the trailer, if you didn't realize, the movie is coming out in October, not that long. The actual subtitle, Folie Adieu, is a French term. It means shared madness. I think it's meant to imply their relationship, Joker and Harley Quinn having a shared madness, because it seems like a lot of the movie is them hallucinating things together. Generally, the movie is meant to still be Elseworlds. I know there were all kinds of theories about it crossing over with the Matt Reeves Batman universe. Both the directors, like Matt Reeves and Todd Phillips, have both said, no, no way. Robert Pattinson was just cast as Batman. I know this is a totally different movie, but... Um but uh, do you see those two worlds merging together anytime soon? No, no. Thank you. definitely not. Interesting. Um, no. My expectation, regardless of how this movie does, like if it does a couple hundred million dollars, if it does many hundreds of millions of dollars, if it does a billion dollars, they probably will not do a third movie. Generally, there are still Elseworlds stuff happening. James Gunn said there would still continue to be Elseworlds movies, but they're still trying to bring everything slowly down to this one single DCU that James Gunn is rebooting everything into. Even though we have that Matt Reeves Batman Penguin series with Colin Farrell's version of the character that will sort of lead into the Batman 2 also happening later this year, that's still meant to be Elseworlds. Creature Commandos episodes are also supposed to happen at the end of the year. That will technically be the first DCU canon thing. The brand new Superman movie with David Cornswit next year will be the actual first live action DCU canon thing. I am sure there's still going to be some confusion and questions when all this stuff starts coming out later this year. So don't worry, I'll talk about all that when all this stuff winds up coming out. There are a couple of surprises we might see in Joker 2, like there might be a version of Harvey Dent because we're talking about his trial there, so the city prosecutor would have to be there, so there might be some Two-Face references. But I think he would still be Harvey Dent, though, like he wouldn't have become Two-Face during that movie. We might also see a version of Harvey Dent Two-Face during the Batman 2. There's a bunch of big stuff coming up. There's supposed to be some special Deadpool and Wolverine footage that they're showing off at CinemaCon, so I'll try to do a video for everything, whatever they wind up releasing this week. Make sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss that. Everybody click here for my new Deadpool and Wolverine video, and click here to learn about Iron Man Robert Downey Jr. coming back in future Marvel movies. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.